financial advisors can help you navigate the complicated and overwhelming number of investment choices that exist today. But how do you find an advisor that's right for you? And what do you need to know about working with one? Hi there, I'm Kelly Keene, author and personal finance educator, and we're going to look at what you need to know when it comes to working with and shopping around for a financial advisor. If you don't have the time, interest, or knowledge to put together an investment plan or choose investments, working with an advisor may be worthwhile for you. The first step is identifying what kind of help you need from your advisor. Advisors can work at banks or private firms, and not all are qualified to offer the same products and services. For example, some are licensed only to sell mutual funds offered by their employer, while others can recommend a broad range of investment options. Choose one with the qualifications and relevant designations to meet your needs. Advisors can be paid by salary, commission, flat fee, or a combination of all the above. It's important to know how much you are willing to pay. You'll need to know your needs and realize that there's more complexity to investing $250,000 versus $10,000, for example. Plus, many advisors will have a minimum investment threshold. If you're new to investing, you may want your advisor to guide you every step of the way. If you're more experienced, you may need an advisor who has more experience and is qualified to sell more complex investments and offer a wider range of options. Be aware of your own skill level and find someone who will cater to it. Finally, your risk profile can determine a lot as well, and it's important to work with an advisor that will recommend products to match it. Visit chuckfirst.ca to learn more about determining your risk profile. Once you consider these factors, you're ready to start looking for an advisor. One way some people find an advisor is to ask family and friends for their recommendations. But even if someone comes highly recommended by someone you trust, that advisor may not be right for your unique circumstances. So it's important to interview potential advisors and ask lots of questions like, what is their background? You want someone with the right education and experience to give you the service you need. What types of investors do they normally work with? If the advisor is familiar working with people similar to you, they may be a good fit. What kind of products do they offer? Some examples of what an advisor could offer include mutual funds, stocks, and scholarship plans. How are they paid? Part of the money you're investing will go to your advisor's fees, even if they're on salary. Regardless of how the advisor is paid, it's your right to know all the specifics. How often will you meet and how will they communicate with you? Ensure the advisor can provide you with the level of service and commitment you need. You can also ask if you'll be working with the advisor directly, their assistant, or some other colleague. It's well within your rights to ask for all of these answers to be provided to you in writing and be prepared as they should have questions for you as well. Once you've made your decision, but before you start working with your advisor, it's important to be aware of what they can and cannot do for you. Your advisor is your partner. You're both working toward achieving your financial goals. They're there to help you develop an investment plan that meets your goals and matches your risk level and help you stay on track. They'll help you set goals. They will provide clear and specific recommendations of investments that match your plan, explain why they recommend them, and also make you aware of the potential risks. They will track your progress and update your plan as needed. Keep in mind that advisors are people too, and there are things they can't do. For example, they cannot predict market performance with certainty. They also can't guarantee an investment or meet unrealistic expectations of profit. In fact, that's a red flag of fraud. And they cannot and should not act on vague instructions to buy or sell investments on your behalf. Advisors have a lot of responsibility, but since it's your money, it's important to know what your responsibilities are too. Prepare for meetings with your advisor in advance. 
review your investments and what you want to discuss beforehand. Be sure to ask questions and take notes, making sure you understand where your money is going and why. Keep an eye on your money by checking in regularly on your investments. Review financial statements as soon as you receive them in the mail and carefully review your online accounts. If you see any unusual or unauthorized account activity, contact your advisor. And keep your advisor up to date. Telling them when your personal or financial situation changes, like a new job, a new baby, or a marriage or divorce, is important because it may affect your plan. Finally, even with the relationship parameters defined, you can never be 100% sure there won't be issues. If you're having trouble with your advisor, you have the right to make a complaint. The first step is to talk to your advisor themselves or their firm, explain your problem and how you would like it resolved. If that doesn't work, then follow the firm's defined complaint procedures. And finally, if you're still having trouble finding a resolution, contact the ASC to learn about other options you have. For more information on finding and working with financial advisors, as well as tools and resources to help you increase your financial literacy, questions to ask and more, visit checkfirst.ca.